Hello everyone and welcome to the combo guide for the Utopia feature week. So in the previous video you have seen exactly how we've built this deck up and why we've made the decisions that we have. So in today's video we're going to go through all the combos, I'm going to hold your hand all the way through and by the time we're done with this you'll be able to play this deck at a proficient level to climb all the way to Platinum 1. I did it myself in about a week so it's completely possible for you guys to just watch the video, learn how to do it, do a bit of practice, and then you'll be ready to jump onto the ladder. So I'm going to jump into some solo games and just show you some opening hands and how to play them so you guys get a good idea of exactly what you're doing at any stage of the duel. Okay guys, we're going to start with the basics and we're going to go with our basic bread and butter combo to get us to our ideal turn one field. So this assumes that we're going first and we're going to play into no interaction Games will get a little bit more complicated and I'll show you a little bit about how we'll play around those kinds of cards but for now it's just good to show you guys exactly how we're going to be starting. So in actual fact this hand is incredible, we can go into our full extended combo with this. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is activate... Now I tell you what, let's start, let's start basic. So this could go really really crazy but I'm going to do this in a way where you can sort of see from the very basics. So we'll pretend we don't have the reinforcements of the army available to us. So we're going to activate Onomata Pickup, and that's going to let us search our deck for a card. We're going to get Onomata Pio, which is uh, Utopic Onomata Pia, which is actually a incredibly strong card because it pretends to be a Zubaba, Gagaga, Ga, Go, 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 and Do, Do, Do card. So it works with all of our synergies. Now, normally, if we don't have the Onomata Para, which is like the main card that you want to resolve in this deck, uh, we would search for this. But the key thing about this is you can discard one card from your hand to the graveyard. Important is that you have to send it to the graveyard should your opponent have a Macrocosmos up or something like that. You won't be able to activate this card. So then we get to add two cards to our hand, but they can't be from the same category. So we get one Zubaba, one Gagaga, -ga -ga, one Dodo, -do -do, or one Go Go Go. So we'll get any combination of these two. Uh, we will, in this situation, because we have already drawn it, we will just add another onomatop uh, utopic onomatopoeia to our hand. And we'll go ahead and activate this effect to send the utopia onomatopoeia to the graveyard. And then we'll go ahead and add one Zubaba. Uh, Zubaba Banco Gaga Gagot to our hand. These names are crazy. I'd make a joke about who named these, but um, if anybody knows my history, that would be kind of silly. Uh, so, next card, we're going to normal summon our Utopic Onomatopoeia. And the reason that we're going to do this, because technically there is a combo line where you can normal summon the Dodo -do -do Dwarf, and then you can special summon the Onomatopoeia from your hand, and then you can special summon the Gagaga -ga -ga Coat, but the problem is if they negate this with Infinite Impermanence, that is really bad for you, and you can no longer combo off. So we don't want to do that. Uh, we are going to go ahead and activate our onomata, uh, Onomatopoeia. Uh, and this is going to let us summon one of each of the Onomat cards from our hand. Uh, so if the opponent's max seed, they only get one draw for that because both the summons happen at the same time. So the first card we're going to XE summon is our ZS Utopic Sage. So we always overlay the Utopia onomatopoeia and the dodo -do -do dwarf and the reason for that is that our gagaga -ga -ga coat can get the uh, our zubaba uh, card can get the utopic monster out of the graveyard so we'll detach two materials and this will let us special summon our ascended sage from our deck and we're just going to pop that over there we're going to need that in a minute so first we're going to activate our zubaba coat and get back our Utopic Onomatopoeia. Zubaba Banco, uh, Bancho, I've got to say his name right. Uh, stop calling him incorrect. I'm just trying to remember the combo at the same time as I'm remembering all these crazy names. So, uh, Dodo -do Dwarf will let you special summon it uh, from the graveyard uh, if you control a Go 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 or Dodo -do -do monster. And of course, we have Utopic Onomatopoeia pretending to be everything. So we can get it back. Now this card will banish itself when it leaves the field, but if you overlay it as an XE material, because XE materials aren't considered monsters from the 
game rules. It won't get banished, so there is a chance for a follow-up, but this deck generally plays all in, so it rarely comes up uh, that you have another turn. So next we're going to go ahead and play uh, Prime Math Mech. Oh, I, I hate this card's name as well. I, I, I hate a lot of these card's names, actually. They're just uh, really tricky to say, yeah. The Prime Math Mech, uh, Alan Bertin, Bertian. Uh, and we can go ahead and special summon that using our free Onomat cards as our materials. Uh, we're not going to go for the fourth. And then we just go ahead and pop this down here. And then we can detach three materials. One, two, three. And get our one-off copy Astraltopia. Now, what would be more optimal in this play is we could have searched with reinforcements of the army, the Astral Utopia, and then instead of making the Prime Math Mech, we would have made the... Uh, we would have special summoned the uh, Gaga Ga Magician. I'll explain that in another combo video, why that's uh, going to be relevant. Uh, the next part of this is we can go ahead and special summon number F-Zero Utopic Futures. And we're going to go ahead and pop that over here. And then we're just going to immediately turn that into this guy. Very, very powerful card. Probably one of the most ridiculous cards in the game right now. The number F0 Utopic Draco Future. So this card can negate the activation of monster effects. Uh, if it activates on the field, you take control of that monster. Uh, it also can be destroyed by battle or card effects. So this is very, very hard to get rid of. And it also just negates every turn as well. And it takes control of your opponent's monsters. So because we control an XE monster, we can special summon the Astral Utopia from our hand. Astral Utopia's effect says that we can send one card from the field or our hand to the graveyard to search our deck for... Uh, very specifically, a Exe, Onomat, Zexel, or Number Spell and Trap card from our deck to our hand. So we're going to send the Onomata pickup from our field to the graveyard because we no longer have any use for this. So this then lets us add one of two cards depending on how you want to play. So Exe Change Tactics is very powerful because it will let us draw a bunch of cards and this will then give us the opportunity to draw into hand traps, which are then going to make our opponent's turn even more difficult. Uh, personally, I like to go for Numbers Protection because this gives you just an extra negation that you can use against anything, and it's better if you're going in blind against an opponent where you don't know what they have. I'd rather have the cards that I know are going to interact and prevent my opponent from playing, as opposed to drawing random cards. We've already got a max C anyway, so we're going to be pretty fine. So we're going to take our Numbers Protection. And then the next part of this combo is we make uh, Number 39 Utopia. We're protected at this stage from Ash Blossom. If, to be honest, if they had it, they would have used it against your Onomata Para, uh, because that card is like the key card to negate when you're playing against the Utopia deck. So that is gonna, when we actually summon a Utopia monster, ZS Ascended Sage will activate. And then this lets us search for our one-off copy Hyper Rank Up Magic Utopia Force. Utopia Force. A little cute name there. So we get to put that straight into our hand, and then that means the rest of our combo is pretty easy. So we go into number C39 Utopia, right here. Uh, this is going to, the reason we do this is it gives us an extra XE material. That's mostly what this card gets used for. There are very, very few times where this attack benefit becomes a, a, a viable option. It's something to keep in mind when you just want to look in for to get some extra mileage out of your cards, but we're pretty much never doing it. If we're ever in this situation, we've probably already lost the game. So, ignoring that, the next part of the combo is that we uh, rank up magic our C39 into number 99. Utopia Dragonar. And then we can detach two materials from this. Uh, we can leave the Utopia attached. And then we can go ahead and get Ultimate Leo Utopia Ray. Now, Utopia Ray, when it's Hexy summoned, because of the special effect of Rank of Magic, when it's in the graveyard and we summon one of these monsters, special summoned by the effect, 
Yeah, if it actually monster is special summoned by the effect of a rank 10 or higher Utopia Utopic monster, so that's this one over here, uh, we get to attach it from the graveyard to that monster. So we can go ahead and put that on the array. And then we can go ahead and detach that material immediately uh, to activate a... Well, to equip a ZW weapon from our deck or extra deck. So we want to get the ZW uh, Pegasus Twin Saber uh, because this acts as an extra negation. The Halberd is for situations where you've drawn the Pegasus and you cannot get it out of your hand onto the field. Then you always have that in your extra deck, so you've always got something to equip. But that is going to be if something has gone wrong, you go for this. Or if it's gone incredibly right and you've hard drawn the XE change tactics, uh, then you can do combos with this, which I'll show you a little bit later. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and equip our Twin Saber. And then set our Numbers Protection. And then we're going to end our turn. We're going to make sure that this is set to on so that we can respond in our opponent's draw phase. Very important that you do this. There are situations where you could wait until your opponent puts a card on the field so that they cannot respond with infinite impermanence, but that card is almost certainly going to be Lightning Storm, and we do not want to get caught out by that. So we can go ahead and touch these two materials. And special summon number 38, Hope Harbinger Dragon. Uh, yeah, normally, actually, this is really bad placement. Uh, because of uh, some of the link monsters, uh, I think it's like the Relinquish Anima or something. You should never put monsters directly below these zones. I should have put it in that zone. If you want to be completely optimal, but for the purpose of this combo, it's going to be the same. You just put the monster in a different zone. And then we can attach the Rank of Magic from the graveyard to the number 38 Hope Harbinger Dragon. So, uh, to walk you through this field, it is an absolute nightmare to play through. So, uh, first and foremost, we can negate any spell card and attach it to a material, so the opponent doesn't even get it in the graveyard if their spell has extra effects. So, Lightning Storm, uh, Covered, uh, a lot of pot, all of the pot cards, these can be negated by this. And it's safe to do so because we also have Numbers Protection as a backup in case the opponent baits us with Pot Desires, then plays Lightning Storm. We've got the Numbers Protection to, to keep us there. Uh, we have Ultima Leo Utopia Ray. Uh, this card can negate a monster and half its attack permanently. Just goes ahead and negates that forever and it also keeps the attack decrease. And we also have the ZW Pegasus Twin Saber. Now Twin Saber is very special because it doesn't activate. It's a continuous effect that you apply to negate a monster. So the opponent can't chain block you. They'll try opponents will try and get clever and arrange a chain in a way where you wouldn't be able to negate chain link one because they've activated an effect, activated another effect. Uh, in situations where that happens, this twin saber is perfect because uh, when they go to resolve their effect, you just apply this and it goes ahead and negates it. So they can't actually outsmart you in that way. And the next negate we have is number F0. Uh, so this can negate the activation of monster effects, destroy them, take and you take control. Again, another reason to be using these extra monster zones just to make sure we have space to take control of their monsters. Is also very good at negating the activation of uh, just effects uh, the opponent's has activating from hand, and you get three of those because we have three materials. The next card we have is uh, Numbers Protection, and this can protect us from anything. And if a number XE monster is destroyed, we get it back from the graveyard. So this can come in a little bit later if the opponent is able to break this build. This is incredibly difficult to play through because we've got one, two, three, four, five negates. The opponent's got six cards, and We've got a max C, so the opponent's going to have to play into the max C because this is more than 9,000 damage. There's no way that they can not play a turn. Uh, even if the opponent just sets a monster and passes, uh, we're going to kill that monster, we're going to negate whatever its effect is, and then we're going to slam them for 9,000. So they have to play in. If the opponent wants to attack us, so say they get to a point where they go for an attack, we can activate Hope Harbinger Dragon, and we can redirect the attack to this. Now the reason that you want to do this is uh, Zodiacs will uh, see this field, and they'll summon Broad Ball, uh, is it Broad Bow, and they'll try and attack you directly, or uh, Lyralis will try and attack you directly and make a put a lot of materials onto a Zeus, uh, Divine Arsenal Zeus. Where is it? Actually, I've got one in my extra deck because this card is insane. Divine Arsenal AA Zeus. Uh, so what we can do is then redirect that direct attack straight into the Hope Harbinger Dragon, and they're going to take a ton of damage. And we can also make their attack zero as well. 
Uh, we're also protected from uh, Lyralisk trying to kill us with the rank 1 that uh, redirects battle damage because we can go ahead and just negate its effects uh, so that then they do take the battle damage from that. So that's your bread and butter combo. Uh, we could have extended uh, from there in a couple of different ways with the reinforcements of the army. But I'll show you in some other combos how we can do uh, extra extensions. But generally the fields that you are summoning always end up looking like this. And a lot of your opponents are going to look at this and scoop once you get to platinum and above. Uh, you will get players trying to play through this in gold. And one of the difficulties you'll have learning this deck is that you kind of need to know what every other opponent's deck's doing. And you'll get decks that are really, really annoying like Dragon Maids, which are doing a million things in their turn and a million things in your turn. And you've got to learn what's important and what's not important. So this is a good deck to train you to get used to that. Uh, this is one of the reasons I really liked the Attic Mister when we featured that. It's because it didn't matter what the opponent did. I was only focused on winning the game. Whereas with this, I need to have be a little bit more clued in on exactly how I'm going to interact with my opponent's cards. What to negate, what to let through in order to have the most optimal place. Anyway, let's continue with the next combo. Not every game goes entirely your way. We don't live in magical Christmas land where our opponents aren't going to play any cards to stop us comboing. So in those situations, uh, here's a fallback play that you guys can rely on in order to help you win those games where you would normally be forced to stop or end up in suboptimal positions. So say we normal summon the Utopic Onomatopoeia and activate the effect. At this stage, our opponent slams down a max C. Uh, at this stage, uh, we are in a bit of a difficult situation. We could summon the second one, uh, but then the opponent's only going to draw one card for that, but then anything else we do for the rest of the turn, they're going to draw more cards. And if you remember, we end up with about five or six interactions. If our opponent draws 20 cards as we us doing that, they are going to beat us. So, one of the panic plays that you can uh, retreat onto is by no means foolproof, but you can always just make a cheeky number 41 Babuska. No one ever suspects the Babuska. The terribly tired tape here, and you're going to put that in defense mode. Now this is incredibly, this incredibly deceptively, as many little terms we could use to describe how annoying this card is. Because while it's in defense mode, all opponent's monsters are turned to defense mode and have their effects negated. During each of your standby phases, you did have to detach one material from this card, otherwise if you, uh, it destroys itself. So it acts as a bit of a floodgate. Uh, so your opponent's monster effects are all going to be pretty much negated. Um, what you do then is it has a different effect when you change it to attack position. Uh, the It cannot be... Uh, what is it? Your opponent cannot target this attack position card with card effects. Uh, so you can essentially then attack quite comfortably into uh, an opponent's monster that's going to be in defense mode because they tried to play some stuff. And then we can just go ahead and overlay Zeus on top, and then we can clear them out. And while we're doing this, we're also backing that up with an Ash Blossom and a Nibiru. So it's very, very hard for our opponent to uh, actually play into this. Now, this doesn't solve every problem, and yet we haven't just discovered the dirtiest little secret in Yu-Gi-Oh! that's going to stop uh, you losing to an opponent's Max C that does resolve, because let's just say we didn't have the Ash Blossom. Uh, the opponent could play Forbidden Droplets on this, and then you're in a very weak position because this does nothing and the opponent is going to full combo. At that point, they've got a four-card hand to do so. And our only way of interacting with that is Ash Blossom and Nibiru in this hand. Uh, but we've probably used this against their max C. They've uh, drawn for turn, so they're on five. They uh, Droplet negate this. Uh, so they've got three cards in hand, and then we're hoping Nibiru gets the job done. But it's something for you to keep in mind, like, if something goes wrong when you're trying to set up or if you end up with a particularly weak opener that you can just make the terribly tired tapir and uh, sit back and see it just cause a load of trouble for, for opponents. Uh, Lyralisks don't like this card at all. Uh, Adagnisters despise this card uh, because they can't really do anything and because you put it in defense mode they can't even lightning storm it. We've got no back row so uh, the lightning storms are completely dead. Opponent's going to be forced to kaiju this if they have it. Uh, yeah, they could also just kaiju, but then they've given you one summon towards your Nibiru as well. So, yeah, always remember the Cheeky Babuska. Okay, guys, for this one, we have not opened great, but we can still play 
off of this, and we're also protected from Max C, so that's pretty good. We're going to go ahead and activate Onomata Pickup, and we are going to go ahead and search our deck for Onomata Hera. We're going to add that to our hand, and next we're going to activate this to discard our Double or Nothing. Normally we wouldn't do this, but hard drawing the Double or Nothing, uh, it takes away quite a bit of power from our deck from an OTK that we have, which I'll show you. But we're not going to be using it for this video, so we're going to go ahead and throw this out. And we're going to go ahead and get our Zubaba Bancho and our Dodo Do. And then we're going to go through our normal steps of normal summon the Topic, Onomatopoeia, special summon the Zubaba and Dodo Do from our hand. So we're going to go here and here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and overlay these two monsters for our ZS Utopia Sage. And we're going to put that in defense mode. Defense mode is very strong, so it's actually from Lightning Storm, but ultimately we end up with a spell negation anyway, so it's generally less relevant in this deck. But there are times where if your combo gets interrupted, it's worth putting things in defense mode because then you blank your opponent's Lightning Storms, and if they're playing free copies of that, you essentially uh, shove them off uh, from being able to clear your monsters. But speaking of Lightning Storm, in this uh, particular instance, we will have an extra layer of protection. So now we can activate our Zubaba to go ahead and get back our Utopia Automat. And we can get our Gagaga, -ga -ga, or sorry, our Dodo -do, do monster back from the graveyard. Now, had we not opened this uh, automatic pickup, because uh, we, we can go Prime Math Mech and get uh, the Astrotopia, get okay, Numbers Protection, but there is another way that we can do this, uh, which can be pretty strong depending on what your opener is, is the Gagaga -ga -ga Magician. Now, I really like Gagaga -ga -ga Magician uh, because it's good as a comeback card, so should the opponent clear your field, there are times where you can get uh, back the Utopia that you've used in your combo. But a Utopic uh, Draco monster that has this as an Exe material gains an extra effect. So what we can do is go ahead and rank these up. And we can go all the way up to number F0 Utopic Draco. And then this is going to be the same part of the combo. So we're going to go Utopia from here. Then we're going to get our rank up magic from our Ascended Sage. Uh, then we're going to rank up the Dragonar. So yep, rank up magic. And then we go C39. Lightning. There's specific situations where you use the lightning. This is not one of them because we're just doing our core combo here. Uh, we go to Dragonar. And then we can use Dragonar's effects to get ourselves Leo. Have to use two materials. Now, something that's kind of lesser known about Leo, uh, we will go ahead and attach our material is that it pretends to be a number C39. Uh, that's actually incredibly relevant uh, because when we detach our C39 in the draw phase, the opponents uh, that know how this card work, they will play Call cool by the Grave and then they'll banish your C39, which will prevent you from using one negation. It's not the end of the world because we had ZW Spear, this negation, and a spell negation, but um, it's something to keep in mind that you do lose, you can lose access to to this uh, when the opponent's playing against you, if they're familiar with your deck. Uh, and that, of course, gets uh, compounded to be considerably worse if you haven't got a Z, uh, ZW Pegasus Twin Saber. Okay, so at this point, something extra that we can do is activate the effect of the 
uh, Gagaga coat uh, to detach. Not the, the yeah, sorry, the Gagaga magician, uh, and we detach the sage, and then target the Dragonar, which is already used its effect this turn. Uh, so that then puts Sage in the graveyard, which means that the first time a Utopia monster uh, would be the Utopia monsters, plural, uh, would be destroyed by Battle of Card Effects, uh, we can banish that card from the graveyard instead. So that gives us Lightning Storm protection. And then in the draw phase, we can go ahead and get our... Harbinger Dragon, number 38. And then we're going to go ahead and put that in a zone that's inconvenient for the opponent if they're playing Attic Misters. And yeah, there we go. So our field is a little bit less oppressive because we don't have the numbers protection. But uh, we've got access to all the negations and we've got the ZS uh, Sage in the graveyard. And we also have one less negate from this, which is important to keep in mind. But it's something that you can do to really protect that, because now we've got one interaction, two interaction, three interaction, four interaction, five if they attack, and six with this. And then we can also block one from the graveyard. So that's sort of seven interactions we've got to our opponent's six card hand. Seems pretty good. Now, hopefully by this point you've got the going first combos down, and you understand that you're kind of doing the same things, you're ending up on the same fields quite regularly. So I'm going to show you going second, a very easy to perform OTK. So stick with me and I'll just load us into a game where I can show you how to do that. So guys, for this next part of the combo video, I'm going to show you what happens when you open a little bit less optimally and you need to work some magic to get to your combo. So as you can see, we've drawn the Z W Spear. This is a twin Pegasus Twin Saber. This is really bad because we can't equip it from our deck to our Ultimate Leo Ray. Uh, but the good news is we have drawn Zexal Construction, which will let us put it back into the deck. So, what we can do is start off with a reinforcement of the army. Uh, this can go ahead and search for any monster we want pretty much so if we consider our options astral utopia is actually a okay option here but then we'd have to give up our maxi or our twin pegasus so we actually probably don't want that so we can just go ahead and get ascended sage uh, so we're going to use our zexal construction uh, this lets us put a card from our hand back into our deck, so that's going to be the Pegasus. And then we can go ahead and add uh, another ZS card to our hand. So now we can go ahead and special summon our Ascended Sage, which will then let us special summon our ZS Sage. We can activate our change tactics, and we're ready to go to time here. So. It's going to be a little bit less optimal than the usual combo, but from here we can go ahead and overlay these two cards. And get number 39, Utopia. Uh, this is going to let all three of these cards trigger, so we're going to do this in a very particular way to prevent the opponent from being able to Ash Blossom this. Firstly, never activate the Armed Sage. We do not want to have that spear back in our hands. Although, that said, Actually, we've got the change tactics, so we can do an extra trick this one. So normally we wouldn't activate this because we don't want to draw it, but because we've got the change tactics, I'm going to show you something really cool. So, we're going to activate Ascended Sage. We're going to also activate the Arm Sage. And at the very top of the chain, we are going to put XE Change Tactics. So if opponent has an Ash Blossom, they essentially pay 500 life points to negate us from drawing... Uh, well, they discard a card to stop us drawing a card that we paid 500 life points for. So this is going to let us put the spear back into our hand. Normally we wouldn't do this, uh, but because we've got XE change tactics, we can actually get away with this. So next part is we're going to just go ahead and rank up into this. And then we're going to pay another 500 life points to draw another card. 
Uh, next part of the combo is we are going to rank up magic, our utopia. And then we're going to summon our number 99 utopic dragon arm. And we're going to pay another 500 life points. And draw another card. Next we're going to activate the dragon arm. We still haven't used our normal summon, by the way, so there is potential to uh, expand this a little bit more. Uh, we can go ahead and get our ultimate ray over here. Uh, this will then let us activate two of these effects, and again, we're going to make sure that the change tactics is on top, uh, and we'll equip our hyper uh, rank up magic to our utopia, and we'll pay 500 life points. Uh, draw another card, so we've now completely refreshed our hand. So, here's the part of the combo that you normally run into trouble with. The ZW Spear, you wouldn't be able to equip from your hand or your deck, uh, which is the reason that we play the one-off copy of ZW uh, Dragonic Halberd in our extra deck. So, if this situation ever comes up, we can always make sure our negation gets equipped. But, because we've got the XE Change Tactics, we can go ahead and equip one ZW monster from our extra deck straight to this card. And we'll go ahead and get our Halberd. So that's going to get us up to a 5500 attack. We can special summon the Spear because we've got 2000 life points less than the opponent. And then the Spear can equip from the field to our Utopia Ray. So we can go over here. And... We don't have enough to get up to Utopic Futures. Well, actually we do, because we've drawn the Onomatopera, so now we can expand this combo even more so. So we can go from here, uh, discarding a Max C, and then we'll go ahead and get a Utopic Onomatopoeia, and then we can grab ourselves a Zubaba General. Now, I think I have just enough space to do this. So we go ahead and summon this, and then we'll go and put both Zuba Bar and Dodo -do into play. Uh, we'll go ahead and overlay these two into uh, Utopic Sage. Wow, we could actually expand this even further now, just uh, realizing it, right? Because we can detach the. Hmm. No, we can't actually go as far as I thought, because uh, we're under some restrictions. Oh, no, no, yeah, we can, yeah, we can, because, um, yeah, we just didn't have the Utopic Monster in the graveyard yet. So we can just bring back our number, well, it's just our Utopic on a map here. Uh, then this is going to go here. Uh, these three can become Prime Math Mech. Yep. And then we can go ahead and activate this effect to touch free. Get our Astral Utopia. We control an Exit monster, so we can go ahead and special summon Astrotopia. Uh, activate the effect, send Exit change tactics to the graveyard, because we've used, used it all now. Uh, go ahead and get numbers protection. We can make F0 over here. Because we control two monsters that are not number monsters. And then we can go ahead and upgrade that into our Draco. Draco Future, even. Uh, number F0, Draco Future. And then we can set Numbers Protection. <coughs> we've got a Max C. And we've also got our Dragon R. So we set this to on during our opponent's draw phase. It's very important to make sure that you've changed your response to make sure that you can do this next part. And then we can activate the effect to touch two materials. Two special summon number 
Loki 8, Hope Harbringer Dragon. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you put it, we don't play any Link Monsters in this deck, so we can just go ahead and pop this here. Uh, if we wanted to be super optimal, we'd put one monster over here to prevent Agnister summoning a rival. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, this is our opponent's turn that they've got to play through. Uh, we have the spell, uh, the spell negation, uh, two monster negations, a monster that will kill them on its own pretty much. Uh, we have the attack redirect, so uh, if they try to attack, we can move the attack to Hope Harbinger, and then number 99 reduces their attack to zero. And we have uh, a negate under F0 as well. There's three negates, so if the opponent ends their turn, this switches back on, this switches back on, this switches back on, and then you gain three negates. Four negates if you count this. We have max C, which we'd normally just throw out here, so our opponent's then got to play their turn three max C. They can't ignore this field. Uh, they will lose the game, and then we've got Numbers Protection, which will protect us from any random trap cards, or if we're forced to use our Hope Harbinger early, this will act as a backup. And it's important when you do this to remember, detach Utopic Sage as your first negation, because then this will protect all of your Utopia monsters from being destroyed once, uh, so that you can make sure that Lightning Storm doesn't clear you out, or Regeki. Obviously we have this and this to get through, but then also being able to detach this and then the opponent gets funny tries to play a regeki or something if you don't mind letting this die you can then just banish the zs and then you can just hold up all your negations so that's taking a little bit of a less optimal hand and then making it uh incredible obviously what we would have done differently is we would not have um re-added the zw to our hand uh if we didn't have the xe change tactics and this combo would have uh, ended up with us not getting access to uh, F0, I believe. Or at the very least, um, yeah, we would not have this uh, ZW attached. So that's a little, taking a suboptimal position and going a little bit further with it. Okay, guys, so for this one, we are going to go second. And I'm going to show you how to do a cheeky OTK on the opponent, depending on how they set up. Uh, I'm not going to use the infinite impermanence, normally we would. Um... Okay, so opponent has set two cards and summon a Sonic third. How retro. Uh, so we're going to draw a card. Uh, it's Crosshack Designator. This is a very, very good card uh, to the deck. So now we're protected from the Biru, Maxi, oh, and Ash Blossom. Uh, draw on Lockbird is still an issue, but we're just going to pretend that's not a card. So we start off with our Harpy's Feather Duster. Clear the opponent's spell in Trap Zone. And now we're pretty much good to go. So we go ahead and special summon our Ascended Sage. Again, this could just be part of your regular uh, trio combo, uh, your basic trio. So in this case, we are going for Utopia Double. So we just go ahead and use these two as materials. Uh, we go ahead and put the Utopia Double here. Uh, we can activate our Sage because it's a Utopia monster. Uh, then this will let us go ahead and add our rank up magic to our hand. Then we can activate the effect to detach a material from this card, so it doesn't really matter which one. Uh, and then we go up to. We add double or nothing to our hand. And then we add. We rank up into number 39 Utopia. Now, number 39 Utopia can no longer attack directly because we've summoned it from the Utopia double, but we've also doubled our attack to 5,000. So at this stage, we go to our battle phase. We declare the attack on the monster. Any monster with less than 2,000 attack in attack mode are easy pickings for this. Anytime you see this opportunity, punish them for it. If they're playing Sky Strikers, punish them for playing Sky Strikers. Silly deck. So, doesn't do enough. Anyway, so we're going to activate our Utopia and negate our own attack. Which is usually a pretty terrible play. But in this situation, that lets us activate double or nothing. This then doubles the attack of the Utopia when it attacks and it can attack again. So we go now up to 10,000. And then we run our opponent over. Now, if for whatever reason the opponent doesn't die there we can play our rank of magic uh to summon dragonar dragonar can then get ray ray can then equip uh then we can 
turned the Dragonar into Divine Arsenal Zeus. Uh, so then we've got uh, three negations plus uh, Zeus, and so the opponent eventually ends up passing the turn, and we can detach your materials, clear the field, and then we can just swing for game. So that's a very cheesy OTK. Whenever your opponent gives you the opportunity to do so, it's kind of your comeback play uh, as well. If the opponent breaks your field, uh, you can find yourself in situations where uh, you don't have a lot of room to work with because you've used your entire extra deck. Some people do play Pot of Avarice, so they can put their whole extra deck back in and try again. Personally, I hate drawing Pot of Avarice uh, because it prevent it's a card that doesn't really combo or prevent my opponent from playing into their combo if they've gone first. So it's a really horrible card to draw early. It's a card that I want to draw uh, later in the duel or when things have gone wrong and I'm not intending for things to go... I don't really want to play cards in my deck that are only good if things have gone wrong. And yeah, so that's going to be it for the combos. I'm now going to show you some videos in live duels and I'll explain exactly how uh what my line of right it's was time to start looking at some real duels and seeing how we put together everything we've learned in the basics of the combos into an actual game so i've queued in against my opponent and i've drawn not amazingly we have got the rank up magic uh, already which means that we can look at the bright side that uh, an ash blossom coming down on our utopia isn't likely to stop us We've drawn the double or nothing. Anytime we draw this card, we feel bad. It takes out our whole line of uh, Utopia double. We do technically have our full Utopia combo because we can normal summon the Onomatopoeia, special summon the Sage, and then we can go off because we've already got the rank up magic. Uh, we've also got Onomatopoeia go go to go for an extended combo depending on what our opponent is playing. So let's go ahead and run the game. We've got no interaction, so our opponent's going to be able to set up and they're going first. Thunder Dragons. Great. Great, great, great. So Thunder Dragons is, is a deck which uh, has a card called Thunder Dragon Colossus. This card is obnoxiously oppressive. Uh, it essentially stops you being able to search your deck for cards. The good news is, is we do have a way of playing through a Thunder Dragon Colossus, but then the problem comes in that if our opponent starts Colossus Titan, this current ha and, and, and then has a Thunder Dragon in hand, our opening hand is actually very, it's going to be very hard pushed to get through this. So our opponent goes with Thunder Dragon Titan. And then they're just going to go for a few more plays. And then we're going to be just, since we've got no interaction, we're just looking exactly what the opponent's going to end up with. So that we can then play through our opponent's field because we are potentially looking at a double or nothing OTK if they leave anything with less than 2,000 attack in play. It's not particularly common for them to do that because it's Thunder Dragons and then also they have the Thunder Dragon Titan uh, to destroy your monster when you your Utopia when you try and go for it. So opponent shuffles three cards back and summons Titan number two. The important thing here is they put their Colossus back in the extra deck, which is a limited one of cards, so the opponent now has access to this oppressive field. And then they're also going to have the Fun Dragon in hand to use with the Titan. Okay, so what's happening here is we've got a Fun Dragon Colossus, uh, which can't be destroyed by uh, battle or card effect because they'll just banish a Thunder Monster from their graveyard. Um, neither player can search their deck for a card, I believe it is. Uh, no, uh, yeah, cards cannot be added from the main deck to your opponent's hand, except by drawing them. Oh, it only affects me, it doesn't even affect my opponent, because my opponent just did that, of course. The next thing going on is the opponent has two copies of Thunder Dragon Titan, and one of them is equipped with Batman Solar, which does nothing. Uh, so, essentially, this card, if it would be destroyed, you can banish... Uh, two cards from your graveyard instead and when Thunder Dragons do that it triggers the effect of the Thunder Dragons in the graveyard so that's already quite annoying uh, and if he activates well if they activate a Thunder Monster uh, as effect in the hand uh, they can activate this effect to destroy one card on the field so it's a quick effect that's not once per turn so if these are two Thunder Dragon cards they can destroy two cards the key thing to remember is that they have to be uh, chaining this effect directly to the thunder effect so if he activates something then i chain he can no longer activate uh thunder dragon titan 
So we got our work cut out for us because we can't search our deck, so that blanks our onomatopoeia. Thankfully, we've already drawn the rank up magic, so we are going to be able to make a play. And we've drawn a double or nothing, so that's going to take away our Utopia double OTK because we'd very much like to try and attack over this, but we also know our opponent has at least one Thunder Dragon and would interrupt us. So we're going to go ahead and draw our sixth card. It's Infinite Impermanence. This is great. Uh, this means that we're going to be able to activate it on the Colossus, and that then allows us to search our deck for two more cards with Onomatopoeia. So we're going to get our combo. We're going to discard the double or nothing, because we're not going to be using that this uh, this cool. Onomatopoeia, we're going to use to summon two monsters from our hand. The opponent's going to come in and destroy a monster. Now, the monster, they... It's actually kind of hard for an opponent to destroy anything, because I can get it back with Zubaba. Uh, and they could have destroyed the Zubapa. That would have also uh, been pretty good. But then what I would have done is over overlaid and then used the ZS Sage from my hand to go this way. So now we can go up into Utopia. And just go ahead and clear that card. And the reason that we didn't go for a full combo is that my opponent's monsters can't be destroyed. But they can be sent to the graveyard. So this gives me a fantastic opportunity to play through my line to summon Zeus with four materials. And now Zeus can detach two, which then clears my opponent's entire field. Opponent's on one card. We've already seen what it is. So our opponent's now going to activate Fun Dragon Fusion. They're going to try and set up again, and then we're going to just Zeus them again. A uh, very tough spot for the opponent to play through in this situation because they did also put uh, a lot of their extra deck cards. They had two Thunder Dragon uh, Titans that they used. And then, yeah, the opponent realizes as soon as they try and go for uh, any significant play, I'm going to Zeus them again. And we still got access to our rank up magic in hand, so we can go through most of our combo. We did already use our Utopia and our Utopia Ray to do that, but there are other ways we could be getting to that. So opponent is like in a situation where they've used all of their resources and we still have the Zeus in play. So that we can also see connection failed. The opponent pressed all F4 and disconnected from the game. They rage quit that game because they had such an excellent start and we were still able to break it. I'll grab you one more video so you guys can sort of see this in action again. And then we're going to wrap it up there and we'll then show you yeah, one more. I think one more will be good. So, for our last replay, we are going to be playing against Tomasu, who is on Adagnisters, which is a deck I've got a little bit of experience with. So, opponent's going first. So, the fact that they're playing into this means that we know that they're going to build up to arrivals. So, I'm going to activate Infinite Impermanence on Achichi. So, my main reason for this is I want to cut my opponent off from any additional colors of the Adagnister monsters. Now, I could have technically held back that infinite impermanence for the Dark Templar much later in the combo. And I'd have left my opponent with a 2300 attack Dark Templar in play, and then it would have been quite hard for my opponent to go anywhere from there. So, potential better places to play the impermanence, but this makes my opponent set up a little bit harder. I'm not going to play the infinite impermanence on the uh, Dark Infant, because the opponent probably already has a field spell in hand. Or at least that's how I would play the deck, uh, because then it means that if I play Impermanence on this, opponent will just activate the other one, and then I've essentially wasted my Impermanence. So, uh, I'm going to work with that. My opponent's now forced to activate Silent Mining. They did have two red in order to get that Picari. So, opponent is now committed a lot of resources into this setup. And the key thing is, while I know I could stop a Dark Templar, I don't want my opponent to pivot. I want to make it look like... They had to fight tooth and nail to get to a rival because I can actually uh, beat a rival with this hand. And the more cards my opponent puts into this uh, field, the better. So it's a case of like, almost in a way baiting my opponent into uh, push, crawling through mud essentially to get to their card. Because they believe that the duel is over when I can't out their arrival and then they'll OTK me back with an access code talker, Yu-Gi-Oh Chad. So opponent's going through the motions and they're just getting their combo pieces. That's the third Achichi. Uh, Cyber's Wicked going to be adding the uh, the Ruru to the hand. And yeah, it's not really a lot to say. It's just a standard out of Mr. Uh, combo. 
at this stage. Nothing too fancy. And if you do want to learn how to play the Agnister deck in detail, there's a full deck feature. There's a whole playlist on our YouTube channel. So just go ahead and navigate over to that and you can watch a deck profile and you can also watch how to play this. So next up, the opponent is going to be doing Splash Mage and this is where they go Dark Templar. I could play, I could have saved my infinite impermanence for this bit, but I don't want my opponent to pivot. I really want them to go all in on this. So yeah, this is the second Dark Infant. So now the opponent has used both the Dark Infants. They could be playing three. I personally only play two in my deck, so I assume the opponent's playing too. It could be incorrect and sometimes you'll get punished for that, but it makes, based on the amount of other stuff you need to put in the extra deck, it's it would be difficult to fit a Dark Infant. So now I know my opponent is very harshly committed to this arrival. Uh, opponent also has a Wind Pegasus, which is completely fine. It, it's a little bit, a little bit annoying, but it's something we can deal with, uh, even with this hand. Transco Talker, quite unusual to pull out the Transco Talker here. Normally you'd save that for uh, an OTK on the following turn. But opponent goes for the big arrival. The arrival Cyber Sagnister. So, for you guys who don't know what this does, this is unaffected by all other card effects. Uh, it, once per turn, it can destroy another monster on the field, and then it summons the Agnister token. It also gains a 1,000 attacks times the number of link materials used for its link summon. The opponent's got up to 5,000. Normally, what you want to aim for is trying to put this... There's like... It's kind of weird, because uh, Access Code Talker goes up to 5,300 if you target a link free monster in the graveyard. So, it's kind of like... You kind of just want to get this at 5,5. Five. That's the sweet spot, but... It takes like so many more resources to get this up to 6,000 uh, that it doesn't like this is kind of as high as it can get, which is perfect for us because we've also drawn actually like, change tactics and on a matter pickup. So we've got potentially one infinite impermanence to play through, uh, and we also have the uh, Damari as well. And the opponent's going to use the Damari prematurely because they think that this is going to stop me from playing. I could go for the Astral Utopia and then send the Onomata Pair to get Numbers Protection, but then I have to give up my XC Change Tactics, and I'm thinking that this could be either Caught by the Grave or Infinite Impermanence, and I want to have access to as many cards as possible uh, when playing through this. So, I'm going to go ahead and make number 39 Utopia. And we're going to go ahead and use our XC Change Tactics to draw a card. Infinite Impermanence would actually be really bad here because it would stop us getting our rank of magic. But the great news is our opponent doesn't have it. We also have the option, if the opponent does have the Infinite Permanence there, to go into our Lightning and then we can trade with this. And then we can get our monster back and we can go off from there. So opponent's face tank card was actually Twin Twister. Not a card I'm used to seeing in Addict Mister, but hey, you know what? You do you. Opponent then stops me drawing additional cards, but we draw max C. We do have double or nothing. We never really want to draw this card, but uh, we can now go up to Dragonar. Dragonar can then get us our ultimate Leo. Yeah, our ultimate Leo Utopia Ray and Utopia Ray. Now, this is another advantage to playing the ZW Halberd in the extra deck. Is that a Pegasus Spear? We'd only get that up to 3,500. We're now going up to 55, which is enough to run over uh, the arrival. Uh, we don't make the XC monster here because if you use Dragonar's effect, uh, other monsters you control can't attack directly. So we don't really want to do that. And our opponent's going to Pegasus away our uh, C39 Utopia Raid. Great news for that is that we left the Spear in the deck. So from there, we can go up to Sage. We've already got a rank up magic. We've played it. So we're going to go ahead and just put that onto a Divine Arsenal Zeus. Uh, so now we've got a way of sweeping the opponent in the middle of their next combo. Opponent has played everything and we're going to activate Dragonar, uh, which let's just put Hope Harbringer back into play. I say back into play, it's the first time in this duel, but you've seen it quite a bit in this video. 
This can also negate the effects of spells that are activated. Uh, so you can actually, when the opponent activates the Agnissa land, uh, then I know that they've got an Agnissa in hand, and we can just attach this to this, and the opponent's on a normal summon. They start the combo through, and then we can Zeus, and the game is over, and we've also got Maxi to basically draw another hand and go again. And that's going to be it for Attic Misters. We beat the arrival and take the game quite comfortably. So guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you've enjoyed this combo tutorial video for the Utopia theme. If you could subscribe uh, to the channel, you'll be informed as soon as we get any new posts or any more deck features like this, so you never miss anything. And if you could shoot us a like or some comments down below to let us know exactly what you think of the video, that would be incredibly helpful to us. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it from me. Cheers, and I'll catch you on the next one.